G'day guys, how are we? Welcome to Talking Boxing. It is Monday, March the 25th, 2024. And I don't need to tell you out there that it is officially fight week. And what a massive week of boxing. Well, a massive fortnight. So we've got Sky Nicholson the, uh, the week after fighting for the WBC female featherweight title. So, so much going on this week. I see uh, people obviously starting to make their way over to Las Vegas this week. And of course, hopefully to Glendale, Arizona as well. And have we ever seen a bigger week of boxing if you're an Australian fight fan? I know there's probably been bigger fights, but as far as just the magnitude of all these fights, of course, Tim and Fundora, Michael Zarafa, Arizani Lara, Liam uh, Wilson and uh, Oscar Valdez, and then uh, and then uh, Sky Nicholson. So the fact we've got three Aussies fighting for world titles and maybe a fourth, it looks like it's not going to happen. I did raise the question... Uh, a few days ago, could we see Liam Wilson, Oscar Valdez for the WBO 130-pound uh, title, the vacant title? Of course, Navarrete has moved up to 135, so he'll be fighting for the vacant 135-pound title on May the 18th, I think it is, in San Diego. So we quite possibly could have had four Aussies in world title fights within a week of each other. So just absolutely bizarre. But uh, but we'll go over. We'll, we'll go over the, the card or whatever you guys want to talk about, of course. But we'll do that. Lots of uh, stuff to talk about over the weekend. I had a little bit to say about a couple of things, um, but uh, overall, look at what a massive weekend just for domestic fights, and then into this weekend. Well, just a a great time to be an Aussie boxing fan. So we'll go over the, the results on the weekend. I just have to admit, I didn't see all the fights and all the cards over the weekend. It was a lot going on. So I watched the Stan Sports Show, Icons Entertainment. And uh, I'll have a bit to say about that. But we've got a few comments in there. I think, Big J, I think you've started a bit of a thing here. Everyone's sort of in a race to get the first comment in. We've got about, was it about 20 comments there already when I first uh, come on. So and someone's given me the thumbs down. So thanks very much, mate. Really appreciate it. Whoever you are out there, you've taken the time to come on the show to give me the thumbs down. No dramas whatsoever. Anyway, uh, there's the boxing kangaroo. That's Carl. G'day, Lyndon. That was some face off. Well, face and chest off. <laughs> it was, it was, well, I won't say it was funny because I don't think Tim uh, and Sebastian Fundora thought it was funny. They did the traditional face-off. But I remember looking back to when uh, Daniel Lewis fought Sebastian Fundora. And I, even, I remember thinking back then, holy shit, look at the size of this guy. This cannot be serious. But it was. Uh, but uh, look, I, I don't know whether Tim whether you know looked like he wanted to smile or be serious. But uh, it was quite bizarre, wasn't it? But look, it'll make no difference on fight night. Uh, once the bell rings, both boys will go at it, and uh, it's, it's an interesting fight. I get, and actually, I think all this has gone down since last week, so we haven't really had a chance to really talk about it. I think it might have been the day after this, or was it Wednesday? Whenever it was, anyway, when all this went down, I think it might have been the day after we did the last week's show. But uh, yeah, just just a bizarre turn of events. But we've gone from well, the 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 car's been flipped on its head. And I actually think it's for the better. I think it's going to be a really interesting card. We'll actually get to that as we go there, guys. I'll bring up the actual card because there is 100 rounds of boxing on this card. There is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 fights on the card. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, my God, how do they put the, all those on? Well, over there in the States, they start at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The main card starts at 6 o'clock, and the main event, I think, is on at probably 9, 9.30, which is the way to do it. And I think we need more Aussie promoters to start adopting that way where they work the way back, where they say the main event's going to be at nine o'clock and that is it. And then we work our way backwards. So, but thanks for uh, tuning in there, Carl. As Bob, am I worrying too much about Fundora's style for Tim? Like Costa thrives on a controlling distance and setting up shots. I've always said that the style that will trouble Tim is another pressure fighter. Well, it's yeah, it's strange you say that he's a pressure fighter as well because he obviously he is. You're talking about Fundora, a guy that's six foot five, six foot six, whatever the hell he is, with the reach and height advantage that he has. Uh, you know, the this uh, willingness to exchange with his opponents, I've never really got it to be honest, and it really blew up in his face last time because he was of course knocked out by Brian Mendoza. Now this is his first fight since that loss, so are we going to see him? do the same thing or are we going to see him maybe take a lesson from that and maybe box a little bit more 
I'm with you though, As, but it's a really fascinating fight. And that's why I'm really intrigued about how the fight's going to go. Because I would think with the Thurman fight, I think we all knew that Tim would be the aggressor. Keith Thurman would be on the back foot. He'd be slick. He'd be, you know, all experienced, all the rest of it. And Tim might struggle a little bit early. But but this fight here, do we get Fondora coming out fast and trying to take Tim on in centre ring? Or does he... T- uh, try and keep his distance and try and jab. He's, and he's not really a jabber, is Fondora. So has he, and, and within, what, a week or so, he's had to prepare for this or 10 days, whatever whatever it's going to be before they uh, before they get in there. Are we going to see a flip on his style for what he may be planned as well uh, against Bowachuk? So it's, look, it's it's an interesting card. And as I said, I, I'm really looking forward to the entire event. Actually, why, actually we'll go through some, some more comments and then we'll get into the actual car, but I'm with you there, Asbot. Don't worry too much about the style. I think Tim is an elite fighter, and elite fighters can adjust to anything, mate. I think uh, maybe the first couple of rounds might be a little bit off-putting for Tim. He's got to find his rhythm, find his range. I know they've done a great job, by the way, of bringing these two uh, tall Southpaw fighters for him to spar with. Uh, I think he sparred with them three times, I think they said. I just think great fighters like well, Costa, his dad, they just adjust. They just do. And that's why I think Tim wasn't concerned or stressed about taking on Fundora. I think by all accounts, it was a two-minute conversation with Glenn, uh, with Glenn Jennings, and he said, let's let's go. So, yeah, I think when you've prepared so well, as Asbot, and you back yourself so much, uh, and you have so much faith in your ability and what you've done in camp, that's why I wasn't surprised at all that he didn't hesitate. But we'll see. All right, we've got another one there from Asbot. Does Fundora smother Tim? and take him out of his game. Well, look, it's a tactic, as but Look, it's an interesting one because you're right. What does he do? I mean, if he tries to smother Tim, see, Tim's the sort of guy who doesn't allow himself to be clinched. A lot of fighters will just are happy just to do the work, be clinched, be broken up, and away they go. Tim likes to fight inside. And if, Tim, uh, if Sebastian Fondora leans on him like he has in some of his other fights, Tim will just keep punching. We've seen the overhand rights he had against Harrison, the great uppercuts he always throws, of course, the the, the body shots that he throws as well. If Fundora fights or chooses to fight on the inside, he has to be busy because if he just leans on Tim and tries to, I don't know, tire him out or negate him, I think that actually works into Tim's hands. Uh, I think Fundora really, if I was in his corner, I'd be saying, don't run but also don't slug. Just keep it at arm's distance and do your thing. Don't let him get past, obviously, his uh, Fundora's natural reach, but don't take a backward step and allow him to push you back and dominate you. You have to stand your ground, but within arm's reach, if that makes sense. And if he does that, if he throws those long-range punches in volume like he has done in the past, as you'll rewind that, if he throws punches in volumes, but he likes to fight on the inside, I think if he takes a step back, and keeps Tim at his arm's distance, but keeps the same work rate up. That's his only chance, I think, to beat or have a chance of beating Tim Zhu. My tip is that Tim just gradually grinds him down and grinds him down and grinds him down, and I think maybe stops him late. And I'm talking tenth, eleventh round, but I think it's all in Fundora's court. I think they'll don't sleep on Fundora before the Mendoza loss. People were talking about him as being the heir apparent of 154. A lot of people backing him to fight or beat Tim. I know it's a year or two or a year and a half, whatever it was ago. So, But all I'm saying is he might be a late replacement, but this guy can really fight. And uh, he'll give Tim troubles, but I still think Tim gets the job done. All right. Another one from Asbot. Or does Tim fold that pretzel like a deck chair? Well, I think I've just uh, covered that, I think. We'll see. Excuse me. There's Dundee Luke. How you going, Luke? Uh, G'day, Lyndon. First PBS boxing card Wednesday night. Wilson versus Valdez Saturday. And Zarafa Lara, Zu Fandora on Sunday. Life is good. Well, it certainly is, mate. And that the uh, PBS card on Wednesday, of course, Taylor Robinson. Uh, can't, I haven't got her, her card up, but I like Jalen Tate on the undercard. So, look, I, I'm really excited to see what Ace Boxing bring to the table. Um, look, if it's anything like... The previous shows I've done on uh, Be In Sport or YouTube, the production's always first class, so that won't be an issue. The commentary they have is normally pretty good as well, so I think I think they're going to be okay. And I think from what I've seen so far with the card itself, it's going to be solid. And look, 
I've always been a bit of a, an advocate for ace boxing. I always think they put on great shows. And I'm expecting this uh, Wednesday night to be no different. I think it'll be well matched, solid fights, um, all action all the way through, and the main event being a really, really good fight. And again, I'll applaud Angelo DiCarlo for putting a female fight as the main event because it's a good quality fight. And as I said, I'm looking forward to seeing Jalen Tate on the undercard as well. There's Ian Davenport. How you going there, mate? Woohoo to you too. Uh, Peter, how does Fundora come in at 154? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Peter. I mean, if you, it's almost like if you look at them side by side, you've got the sort of nuggety, solid Tim. It's almost like if you stretched him out, um, that's sort of what you get with Fundora. You can see his weight distributed over six foot six or whatever the hell he is. So not much in those legs, Peter. And if you look at his arms, they're very, very skinny. Not much, obviously, in the torso. Uh, I suppose it's like a, a pair of good boxing gloves. Some of them have all the weight in the top of the glove. I know the amateurs do on the top of the glove. Uh, and the others have it in the wrist. And, of course, others have it at the at the uh, the end. But either way, they stuff the weight in there, Peter. But on with you. Uh, and, he, and he said he does the weight easy, which is really quite surprising. So, yeah, we'll, start, we'll see. I think Tim will make the weight pretty easy as well. But it sounds like he's, he's doing things really well over there and well on point. Uh, there is a big J, massive week in boxing, four championship bouts, Robertson for the IBO, Wilson, WBO, or, uh, is it for the WBO, big J, I'm not sure, is Rafa, WBA, Zoo, WBC and WBO, yeah, well, as I said, mate, the biggest week, I think, in um, in boxing history in Australia, because you didn't put Nicholson in there as well with uh, the WBC featherweight belt. Uh, another one from Big J. Looks like all you cheeky buggers <laughs> stole my prep idea. Uh, get in early on the comments. Uh, Lynn Zhu in nine and catch up with McAllister if you get the chance. I did see he's over there, Big J. He's uh, beat you to the punch. He's got on a plane and gone over. I think he's there now. I did see he's done an interview with Glenn Jennings and Liam Wilson. I haven't had a chance to uh, see them yet, but I did see, um, I think it was on YouTube. I might have seen that uh, he put them up. So uh, good on him. I'll give him your regards if I see him, Big J. I'm sure he'll be pretty busy over there. I'm not sure whether he's got a press pass or not, so let's hope he has. But uh, when you've got access to Tim and Glenn and Liam and whoever, I mean, you probably don't need a press pass anyway. And I'm sure uh, Michael Zarafa will uh, give him some time as well. Uh, we'll see how we go with the link, Big J. We'll just see how we're going with time as far as all the comments go. Uh, Linda, where do you think Zarafa goes if he loses? Good question. Uh, does he go back to Brian and Matruda on the or the construction site? Serious question. Look, it's a good question, Big J. It is a really good question. Um, look, he's 30 years old. I wouldn't say, well, I don't know. Is is this it for him? I, I would think, it, look, he's done so well or his team's done so well to maneuver him in the into the position he's in at the moment. Look, he's got to do the job in the ring. He's done that uh, recently. Uh, but look, I think, as I said, whoever's maneuvered him, Elvis Grant, and I know he's had a few different promoters and managers and everything else, trainers, of course, but they've done a really good job getting him to this point. And when you think about it, if he can't beat Lara on Sunday, Australian time, I don't think he's ever going to win a world title. This is his best chance ever. Lara, almost 41 years old, uh, hasn't been very active at all. But let's not forget, this is, this is the same era as Landy Lara, I know it was 10 years ago, that lost a very, very, very hotly disputed decision to a young 154-pound champion in Canelo Alvarez. So the, the, make no mistake, the guy can fight. And I've said that a few times in the last few days. The guy can fight. So, But the facts are, Lara is, has been inactive and 41, but you still don't lose your skill. And he looks in really good nick, does Lara. But again, it doesn't change the fact that if Michael can't beat Lara in this fight, I don't think he gets another chance. I really don't. Not really much in the or on the domestic scene for him. Uh, I don't think there's a Harbin rematch in there for him. Isaac's obviously got to build himself up again for the third time. I'm not sure, Big J. I think, I think this would probably be the last we would see of him at the world level. And then we're going to look at, does he really want to come back to domestic level and at level? And even if he does, is there anything for him? So it's a really good point you make there. Big J's rolling the dice and does he crap out or does he hit the bullseye? I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think if he can't win this fight, I'm not quite sure where he goes. It might actually be curtains as far as his elite career goes, but uh, let's hope it's not like that. He wins that belt. 
sets up some some other big fights and uh, gets a few big paydays and he can finish his career strongly. There's Ed Woodson. How are you, Ed? Got the notification off work at 10 p.m. here in Chicago. Much respect. Well, much respect to you too, Ed. Really appreciate that you're tuning in from Chicago. I'm uh, looking forward to getting over to your part of the world. Uh, I'll leave tomorrow, actually. So looking forward to getting over there. It's not real warm, though, I've got to say, Ed. Even in Las Vegas, I think it was... Uh, I'll double-check while I'm here. But I've got a feeling it wasn't overly warm even in Vegas, which really surprised me. It is going to be... Actually, let's go to Glendale, Arizona, for starters. So when am I there? So, all right. High 20s in Glendale. This is Celsius, by the way, for you American people out there. And in Las Vegas, I'm only there Saturday, 19 degrees. 19 and then 16 and 16 the next two days after that. It's warmer here at the moment. So anyway, but again, mate, uh, much respect to you as well for tuning in. I really appreciate it. There's Victor J. How are you, Victor? The stare down with Zoo and Fandora looked a lot like Nick Ball and Vargas. It did, didn't it? As I said, Victor, I didn't know. Well, I'm sure Tim didn't either whether to laugh or, or uh, try and keep a straight face. And a salute to you too, mate. Thanks for uh, joining in. Uh, Fundora is a solid fighter, but coming off a devastating KO loss and one year inactive. I wonder how timid he'll be. It's hard for me to believe a guy who was dropped by Lubin and Mendoza won't succumb to Zoo. Let's not forget, though, Victor, that he was beating uh, Mendoza quite comfortably when he got caught. I think we're all sort of forgetting that. And I know it doesn't really matter whether you're winning the fight or not. And the end result is all that matters. I understand that, but... The, the, the fact of the matter is that up until he got caught in the seventh round against Mendoza, he was winning that fight, and I thought quite comfortably. Mendoza had some success, and again, I know he ended up knocking him out, so it was it was a mute point. But look, he's got the style. Uh, he's got good management behind him. Not that they can obviously help him in the ring, but I'm pretty interested and curious like you to see how he goes after being out for an entire year. I think it might actually have done him a little bit of good. Like, just... Obviously, it would have been great to have a tune-up fight in between, but I don't think it'll it'll be that much for him. Look, you got these these fighters at this level. Look, they just they're just elite for a reason. It means they can they can have a year or two off. I look at the greats. I know Sebastian Fundora is no Crawford or Mayweather or Tank Davis, who, who all these guys fought very rarely or once a year or whatever it might be. But yeah, look, you don't you don't lose your ability to be an elite fighter, Victor, and I think he'll surprise at how well he goes. Tim still wins in my book, but uh, it's a tough fight. It's a tough fight. Another one there from Victor. There's been a lot of talk with Canelo talking about how big Benavides is and Tank saying how big Haney is. Do you think his excuses, or would you like to see the same day Wayne sort of like the IBF has? Look, I think... I'm probably in a minority here, Victor. I think they've all got valid points. And I know Canelo cops it. And I know I'm a bit of a, I won't say I'm a fanboy, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Canelo and his, the legacy that he's created for himself. Should he fight Benavides? Yes, absolutely. But I do understand where he's coming from. Now, there's been talk that Benavides goes all the way up to 200 pounds uh, when he's finished weighing in. So that's 32 pounds. Now that is, I'm just trying to think in kilos. Now, that's 14 and a half kilograms. That's a lot of weight. Now, Canelo, he would probably put on... Now, he might... Uh, where are we? So, he might put on, you know, maybe four four kilos, I would think, because he's... I, I think he's still a natural middleweight myself, and he fights at super middleweight just because it's just easier for him at that stage of his career rather than, than wasting down. But So, the, the, the difference in weight is substantial. It could be... 20 pounds. So that's what's at 10 kilos. It's a lot of weight to put on. So I've got, would I like to see the fight? 100% absolutely I would, but I don't, I'm not going to be super critical of Canelo for saying, look, this guy is an absolute monster. And I just, you know, I, I just, it's not a fight that I want. Um, my personal view, again, on the flip side of that, of course, if, well, it doesn't really, or shouldn't really matter what you weigh after the, the weigh. And if you make the weight limit of that division, well, it's open slather, isn't it? So that's the, the flip side of it. That's the, the, the pure way of looking at it. But from Canelo's point of view, looking at it from a business point of view, I can understand him thinking this guy's a, monst a, a monster as it is. Do I really need him outweighing me by 10 or 20 odd pounds, uh, 10 kilos or 20 odd pounds? So, yeah. I don't like same day weigh-ins, uh, Victor. I think, look, I, I don't like the rushed rehydration. I do like the 24 hours. 
Maybe what they could do is say, look, we're going to do, uh, uh, it's not a 24, maybe it's, uh, or what's it been in the morning? So they fight at, say, 9 o'clock at night. They might do the weigh-in at 9 o'clock at night. So he's got 24 hours and that's it. Now, he, obviously, he can still rehydrate a fair bit, but it's it's just give it's a little bit something back in Canelo's favour. So rather than weighing in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and having plenty of time to rehydrate, just maybe say, all right, we'll meet halfway. I'm not going to get you to re uh, uh, to have a rehydration clause, but we're having a 24 hour weigh-in, which means nine o'clock, and then you can go for your life. So just little things like that. But as I said, man, I don't want to see same day weigh-ins. I think that's that doesn't really suit anyone, except of course the the fighters that make the weight super easy. But there's not many of those around these days. They all waste down as as, uh, as much as they can. As but what happened to Fundora's original opponent, by the way? Step aside money. No, he is fighting Brian Mendoza, as but. Uh, and as we're going, let's have a quick look at the card as we're going. All right, just quickly, because I know we've got a few, a lot of comments in there. So, of course, we've got Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora over 12, Riley Romero, and Isaac, or Isaac, whoever you want to pronounce it, over 12 um, at for WBA 140 pound titles, Zoo Fundora for the WBC WBO 154. Then we've got Lara Zarafa for the WBA 160, and there it is there. So, and look, look at this, guys: four world title fights and an interim world title fight. Amazing. So there's Brian Mendoza and Bowachuk for the interim WBC 154 pound title. Then you've got Julio Cesar Martinez and Angelino Cordova. Uh, fighting over 12 rounds for the WBC flyweight title. And then, of course, we've got another, well, a lot of rounds there. And one fighter you'll see there down here is Kamel Moton. I'm not sure he'll be on the televised portion, but 2-0, and oh, he's with the Mayweather stable. Keep a lookout for this guy. He's a great young talent. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing him. But what a card that is. All right, we'll go. There's Dundee Luke again. Heard D Style saying Fandora has a good uppercut. But Tim should put away the uppercut. The only thing he could hit is Fandora's nutsack. Uh, I think he'll find a way. Look, I think what you'll find as the fight goes on, Luke, is that especially if Fandora tries to close it up, is that you start to bend a little bit as you get a little bit more fatigued. And, of course, that works into uh, Tim's favor as far as range and also the uppercut coming through. So we'll see. And yes, Ian, hitting the like is free. So if you're a viewer and there's about 40 of you out there having a look at this, make sure you hit the like button. What have we got? 17. And um, someone's actually taken the dislike button off. So if that was you, I appreciate it. I'll give you the benefit of doubt and say that was hit in error. Let's hope so. All right, guys, there's Jules. Uh, what have we got there, mate? Um, uh, congrats, Lyndon Fandora in for Thurman is a massive coup for those going across. As a former promoter, walk us through the conversations that would have happened to get that fight over the line. That's a really, really good question, Jules. Look, I've never been at that elite level, but I'm assuming whether it's at that super elite level or the mid-range level that I was at, I think as far as from what I've seen, it's a quick conversation. There would have been, and I'll give this to no limit, by the way, because George Rose and Matt Rose would have had a sleepless night, would have been phone calls and emails and everything going back and forth. But I think what would have happened straight away is, all right, well, everyone says, well, what happens now, of course? So then it would be a matter of, I think, the promoter saying, well, do we want to even try and rematch these guys to salvage the card or do we just scrap the card i think that would have been the main point straight up do we even want to try and salvage the event and the promoters and networks and everything would have thought well hey we've come this far we're not a month out here we're a week and a half we have to get this we have to make this happen it's our first pay-per-view for the year so we need to to get on the board we don't need this for our first ever amazon prime pay-per-view to have it cancelled so then it would have been okay now what they would have looked and said, okay, well, Tim's still there. Who is a viable option for Tim that's ready to go? Do we look outside the card? Do we look inside the card? Of course, the first thing you do is look on the card. And I've got a feeling there would have been, there's a couple of fights on the card around the same weight. This is sometimes what they do to protect themselves. And they would have said, okay, well, who's the logical opponent? Then they would have looked at Fundora and said, well, he's our, our, uh, our pick as far as being a suitable replacement, I'm sure they would have talked about 
uh, Lara. I don't know that Tim actually said himself. I'm not sure whether he was joking about it or not. I think even Michael Zarafa put his hand up to fight Tim Zoo. Can you imagine Tim Zoo, Michael Zarafa at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas? It would have been really odd, wouldn't it? Would have been a treat for us Aussies over there. but And then it would have been, okay, well, Fandora's the one we want. Now we've got to talk to the teams and see whether we can make this happen. And by all accounts, Fandora and Tim both said, let's go. Then it would have been, okay, Brian Mendoza's in camp. We can re- we'll can we keep Boacek happy. He still gets to fight for the vacant uh, interim belt because his contract's involved. Then it would have been, okay, well, let's go. I know that's the real simplistic way of looking at it. They would have had all financial implications and um, the, the promotion of the event and everything else. But that's pretty simple, I think, how it would have went down, Jules. Um, I hope that sort of gave you a little bit of uh, insight. But that's sometimes it's just boiling it down to not getting too complica- uh, complicated about it. We all sometimes think they all sit around these big boardrooms and the whiteboards and the magic markers and all the rest of it. And maybe some of them do. But sometimes it's just asking the absolute basic questions. Firstly, do we want the event to go on? Okay, who's a logical replacement? And three, let's get them to agree to fight each other. And then we can worry about everything else after that. I think that's how simple it would probably have been. I'm not the one that was up all night like the Rose Brothers were, of course, but it would have been you know, a lot of back and forth. But that's it in a simplistic way how I think it would have went down. There's Ronnie Pickin. How are you, uh, uh, Ronnie? Uh, even though he's in a strong field, Dalton Smith looked very impressive in stopping a very good fighter in Jose Zepeda. Thoughts, anyone? I didn't watch the fight, Ronnie. I'm sorry. I know it was on yesterday on, was it Fox or DAZN, whatever it was not sure, here in Australia. I'm not quite sure, but I didn't see it, mate. I did uh, look at some highlights today on YouTube, but by all accounts, a very, very good performance by Dalton Smith. All right. Speaking of Dalton, anyone seen the new Roadhouse yet? I watched it last night. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. Not sure why they called it Roadhouse, though, and called it a uh, remake or reboot, because it was nothing like the first one, but still not a bad watch, and I love Conor McGregor in it. Anyway, we'll move on. Kyle, I'd love to know how a boa took got screwed out of not just the WBC title, but apparently the main card as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, because it was going to be for the full WBC belt, wasn't it? Oh, uh, look, Kyle, when when you're that far down the card or on the list of priorities, there'd be, there'd be things in the contract no doubt that would give PBC and everyone outs, different outs. They can either scrap him from the card entirely and pay him uh, an amount of money. Obviously, what they've done here is downgrade the title. The main card, though, is that, well, so this is the the Australian por- uh, portion of it. So I'm not sure. Is he off the card? Is he? I wouldn't have thought, um, I would have thought he would be on the main card there, mate. It's the fourth world title for all oh, the fourth what's well, a non-title fight but interim title the fourth big fight on that card um yeah although that would be 48 rounds which probably goes against the grain of what main event would probably be looking at i would say they would probably just want the three 12 rounders but let us know there uh all right sam munro how are you there mate what other fighter puts his belt on the line with this type of drastic opponent change with 12 days notice if tim pulls his off he will gain a lot of respect well i think he's got a lot of respect anyway for taking the fight sam but Look, I don't think Tim will be looking for any pats on the back or or anything, um, you know, the respect factor. I think he just, he's done a full camp. He's been, he's been mucked around in the past a lot of times. He just would have been saying, hey, look, we're a week and a half out. Just get me someone. I just want to fight. So that's what he his, uh, his approach would have been. Yes, he gets a lot of respect from you and I outside the ring, but I think Tim would have just been saying, whatever, just, I've got better things to worry about than this. Just get me this locked away and let's go. So that's what Tim would have been looking at, I would have thought. And as I said before too, Sam, when you're an elite fighter like Tim who backs yourself like he does, would have been two seconds hesitation. Not even. It would have went, yeah, okay, let's go. There's Andy. How are you, mate? Welcome to the show. And yes, subscribe, share, and smash that like. Love it. All right, Big J. Uh, what's that? I call BS on the whole Thurman thing. Okay, well, there's another thing we haven't uh, seen. Just a publicity stunt to promote the real fight of Zoo versus Fundora. Plus, a unified bout should have happened when Zoo versus Mendoza fought. Yeah, I will agree on that, uh, Big J. Mendoza was the interim WBC champ. Of course, uh, of course, Tim was the reigning WBO champ. You're right. That should have been for the two belts right there and then. But either way, this fight would have been for it, whether that was or not so but yeah i did see keith thurman 
Big J with his his Instagram post or social media post, and he did have a, a really bit of a wound on the, the middle of his head. I don't know what that was, but I don't think he seemed too upset between me and you, Big J. Uh, I know he put up his medical certificate or whatever it was that he put up from the uh, from the doctor. Look, I'm not going to question the validity validity of the injury. I just don't think he was too stressed that the fight was off, Big J. Didn't seem too stressed. I'm sure if it was the other way around, you would have seen a very shattered Tim Zhu, I would have thought. Uh, Big J, uh, Dennis Andrews versus Jeff Hardy, number one in 89. Did I miss a comment there? Did I? Sorry if I have. Uh, yeah, apologies about that. All right, Sam. Phil for Mendoza beats Fandora and ends up at his as his replacement. Well, it's probably not the first time, Sam. It just happens. You know, I think he would have been happy to be on the card and fighting for a, a, an interim title. So I don't think he'd be, he'd be too stressed about that. But uh, just the way it works sometimes. Sometimes you beat someone, end up on their undercard. Just the way it goes. I don't think, obviously, they could have looked at Mendoza to fight Tim, but they've been sparring together. They're all mates now. So that wouldn't have made um, any sense whatsoever. But yeah, it's just sometimes that's the way it pans out. Ronnie, uh, see Zoo having a look for a couple of rounds, the going, uh, then going hard to the body and doing some damage. I don't see him getting caught with the uppercut. I don't think so either, Ronnie. I think, uh, you know, the, the Fundora style does suit Tim as long as he fights a certain way, if that makes sense. As I said earlier, if he leans on Tim, I see uppercuts and overhand rights coming all over the place as well as body shots. But... Um, I'd look, at the end of the day, I don't think really whatever some Sebastian Fandora does, I don't see him a chance to win the fight. But his best chance, as I said earlier, is to keep the distance, throw lots of punches, keep Tim off him, lots of sidestepping and everything, lateral movement, which is not usually his in his repertoire. But he's got to do some, some different things if he's going to have a chance to win this fight. But I'm with you there, mate. I don't see the uppercut really landing um, and... Yeah, you're right. Tim will hurt him to the body, no doubt. That body of Fundora is like a punching bag for Tim. Pretty narrow punching bag, though, Kyle. <laughs> um, Zoo will shatter bone until, until Fundora drops that head, and then it's uppercut City. Yeah, well, that's if he decides to lean on him like he's been guilty of. 12 days notice, Mendoza lost a side. In my opinion, Fundora was always the equal most dangerous opponent in the division for Tim uh, with uh, Madrimov. Yep. Could be an instant classic, but dangerous, dangerous fight. Yeah, I'm with you there, Jules. And that's why once the dust settled on the whole Thurman thing, and look, I must admit, like, like probably a lot of Aussies that are going over for the fight, when I saw it in the morning, my heart sank. And I thought, oh, no, here we go. This fight's going to be cancelled, and we all have flight credits that we've got to try and chase up again. Um, but luckily, it's all uh, it's all worked out. But uh, I'm with you there, uh their jewels as i said once the dust settled i was really excited for the fight now this again this is a, a fight that a year or two ago we always looked at tim versus fundora as being the next big super fight at this weight now it's obviously all come undone once once mendoza landed that big sort of left hook right hand or vice versa whatever it was but i think this i think it has got classic uh, or an instant classic or dangerous fight written all over it but i just think it's a really good fight I think they match up really well. Tim, he's going to be, you know, he's going to have to change things up a little bit. He's probably going to be a little bit confused by Fundora early. I just think it's it's going to be a good fight, Jules, but I'm with you. And the fact that it's on short notice makes it even more intriguing. Victor, does Zoo have to win impressively for Bud to want the fight or will any kind of win be enough since Bud's options are limited? I just think he has to win the fight, Victor. I think that's all it would take. It would be great if he had a highlight real knockout or a really uh, impressive win or whatever it might be. But I've got a feeling that Crawford's been looking at Tim for quite some time. Obviously, he wanted Canelo and you know maybe one or two others. But at the end of the day, I think he would have seen Tim as that guy at 154. If things don't really work out, that he can be the one that we target next. And it's even better for Crawford in that Tim likes to fight regularly. So if he gets past this one, which was what, late March, um, he'll probably fight him in July, which is a sort of four-month sort of turnaround. So for Tim, that's about uh, par for the course, and that probably suits uh, Terence Crawford as well because it would have been a year for him as well, which is sort of his sort of turnaround time as well. So it all adds up 
to that fight happening. But um, yeah, I just think Crawford had his eyes on Tim for a while. Victor, and the fact now is he's uh, enacted that clause that says he will now be the number one ranked WBO challenger for the winner shows that that fight's going to happen. No doubt. What's and, and can you imagine a little bit of pressure there, I suppose, for Tim, knowing that if he gets past Fundora, he could have another date at the T-Mobile Arena in July or maybe August, whatever it might be, against the best fighter in the world as we speak. Well, arguably, of course, in a way, we might have something to say about that. But so some massive stakes there and um, we might be going back in July. Who knows? All right, Luke, how you going there, mate? Uh, does Wilson get the strap? Super excited for this fight. N not at this stage, I don't think. Um, Luke, let me just put it. I've seen nothing about it. And I'm going to bring his name up here and just see what, because, mate, sometimes things slip through um, that we don't sort of see. Where is it? Uh, all right. So, no, nah, it doesn't say anything about a title fight there, Luke. It just says it's a 12-round fight. In Glendale, Arizona, I just it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I can't get my head around the fact why they wouldn't make this for the vacant belt. Sanctioning fees are involved, of course. Maybe top rank didn't want to pay the sanctioning fees. I strongly doubt that. For them, it's pocket change, but it just doesn't make sense. Uh, I know Glenn said in, in an interview that he was pushing for it, but obviously nothing so far. But it just, I think it just makes sense to make that fight for a belt. Why not? One's ranked number two. One's ranked number four. Make the winner fight the mandatory next. Happy days. But anyway, it's got to be something that's gone on behind closed doors. There's Double G. Regardless of what people think of Keith, his uh, promo style did bring eyes to this event, which is a win for everyone. Not knocking Tim or uh, slash Fundora, but they are not really those brash promo type of guys. Yeah, well, it's a good point there, Double G. A lot of the work was put in by Keith to get eyeballs on the event. Sell tickets, of course. Uh, and now Tim and uh, Sebastian Fundora don't really need to do a lot to hype the, the event up. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a good point. Another one from Double G. Uh, there is now some genuine interest in this card, especially now with the Crawford factor. Yeah, as I said, mate, the Crawford thing, out uh, the asterisk now with that Terence Crawford uh, carrot sitting out there for the winner, got massive implications. And, uh, you know, whether not that these guys needed any more... Um, you know, carrots put in front of them, but the fact that the winner is going to get Terence Crawford, it's it's just huge. And uh, as I said, we might be heading back to the T-Mobile uh, Arena in uh, July on a massive, massive card that would be. So uh, some big stakes there for the winner. Uh, Kyle, who else believes Icons is a sinking ship after seeing all those empty seats in the Paul Alcuso fight? I must admit, Kyle, I did think the same thing. Um, I'm not sure if any, everyone out there watched the fight. So many uh, on uh, stream streaming apps and whatever it might have been. But I did see that, Kyle. It was a really, really small venue from the start. And the fact that it looked half empty right from the word go. And when the main event was on, yeah. As a promoter myself, that's, it, that's the first thing I looked at, Kyle. I was thinking, geez, this card would have cost about that much. Um, judging by the amount of seats they've got there, they would have made this much. Yeah, they need to probably um, get the business model maybe ticking over a little bit better, Kyle, if they're going to make money and get behind Paul Okuso. Look, maybe there were sponsors and all the rest of it. I don't know. But judging by the half-empty stadium and a small stadium, I would have thought there would have been no more than 250 to 300 people there. And you're not going to cover a fight card uh, and bringing in uh, the, the Kenyan, was it the Kenyan guy? Whoever he fought, Dunzo. Um, that wouldn't have been cheap to bring him, him in either. Him and his team, uh, could, look, it could have been 15 grand in airfares, accommodation might have, you know, food, money and everything else. And medicals might have been another five, plus his purse. Not sure what he got paid. So there's like 20 grand plus his purse. Plus you've got to play Paul Alcuso and the undercard and the production and everything else. Yeah. Uh, let's look, let's hope. Um, they get a little bit better traction there, Kyle. But judging on that event, I wouldn't like to uh, be the accountant at the end of the day for that one. But um, give them a chance. It's only the first event on... Oh, no, it's not the first event on Stan, is it? They've done a couple of others. But first, sort of one with Paulo Acuso or second. What You understand where I'm getting at. Let's hope they, <laughs> they get going. They, uh, you know, they get a, a bit more backing behind them, a few more bums on seats, and they make some, some money out of it. They're going to need to, by the way. They're going to keep getting behind Paulo Acuso because as the level goes up, so does the expenses. So, 
Uh, Ronnie Pickens says, "Howdy, peeps! Thanks to all the great uh, for all the great comments about a sport we all love." Yep, here, here, Ronnie. I uh, second that there, mate. Luke Wilson for interim WBO. All right, mate. Well, let's hope that's the case. It doesn't say it on the on box rec, mate. But if that's the case, let, let's let's hope that is the case. All right, Carl. If Spencer Thurman ever want to fight again, they should just fight each other. Personally, I think they're both cooked. I agree, Kyle. I think it's a long, long road back for Spence and an even longer road for Thurman. At least Thurman hasn't had, well, I was going to say hasn't had the injuries. He has, but um, not as serious as what Errol Spence has anyway. And he did take the beating that Errol Spence took. But either way, look, I think I think uh, Keith Thurman, look, he's got to probably put up or shut up now. He's not going to get a big fight like this uh, anytime soon, I wouldn't have thought. And especially at what he 35, 36, whatever it might be. So I think his time's limited. Spencer's obviously got some uh, some big fights out there if he wants them. But if I was him at, the, at his stage of his career, I would go straight up to 160 without a without a drama. Don't not not even hesitate about it. Straight to 160 and let's go. Forget about 147. Forget about 154. Go to straight to 160 where you're going to be healthy and strong and you can worry about getting your body right rather than wasting away and putting yourself in in uh, in health, uh, a danger of his health. So, but yeah, I think both on the downside of their careers, uh, Kyle. All right. There's, yeah, I do like that uh, artwork there, Carl. Not bad at all. Anybody interested in the co-main event with Estrada and Valley fighting for Undisputed? Uh, what is that the female card, Kyle? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's for the uh, Undisputed. So WBA, WBC, WBO, and IBF world titles. Let's have a quick look at that card while we're going there, guys. This is the Liam Wilson, Oscar Valdez card. So 12 rounds, you can see there, doesn't say anything about the interim title, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So you got, uh, yeah, Senisa Estrada, Yocasta Valley for that undisputed uh, minimum weight title. I like, where is he? Down here. Uh, Emiliano Vargas. That's the son of Fernando Vargas. So he'll be on that card. Eight, no. Uh, you'd think he'd get the chocolates over Nelson Hampton, who's 10 and eight. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to the card. It should be a stacked card and top rank shows are always really, really good. I'll come out of that there. All right. Carl says, I heard Jeno say Nikita's fight announcement is soon, very soon. Yeah, I did see that, Carl. Oh, we didn't probably go over that either, did we, since last week? I just hope more than anything that Danilo Creati does not get the shot. I'm, I'm hoping they, or common sense prevails, and they say, yeah, this is going to be a hard sell. And I think I said on my Instagram the other day, I know they'll push the fact that he went 10 rounds with Zarafa, Especially if Zarafa wins a world title, by the way, they'll be saying that he went the distance and with world champion Michael Zarafa and um, you know a former Italian amateur champion and this and that. But end of the day, I think if you saw the show, and I'm assuming many of you did, it was free on Fox. That I know it was short notice, by the way. Just the first thing I will preempt it with: he got off the couch three days out. But that's not my fault or your fault, or anyone else's fault. That he chose to fight. So if you get in there, you got to be ready to fight. And of course, we'll give him a little bit of latitude. But how how can we possibly market the fight that he's going to be in with a chance against Nikita Zoo? It's 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 impossible. And again, the four round main event thing. Well, that's just embarrassing, if you ask me. But anyway, we'll move on. And he says, Fandora has shown good durability apart from that one time when Mendoza found the button. Should be close competitive fight while it lasts. Hope Tim's st- um, hope still via body shot like my Thurman prediction. Yeah, I'm not sure it'll be body shots. My my um, sort of I suppose tip, if you want to call it that, is I don't think it's body shots that that do the job with Fandora Andy. I think he just chops him down. Yeah, body shots might slow him down and get him a little bit closer. But I I see those uppercuts and overhand rights and the volume of punches. And the pressure that Tim puts on, that perceived pressure that he always puts on his opponents, I just see the weight of that just being too heavy for Fundora. He starts to wilt a little bit, and then Tim just pours it on. So while the body shots might help soften him up, I can just see those big uppercuts and overhand rights doing the job in the end. But time will tell, won't it? 
Kyle, I was watching Sparks last fight. Very unlucky to lose that split decision. I think he would be a great fight for Nikita if, if he ever wants to come out of retirement. I think from what I've seen, Kyle, he's very happy in retirement at the moment. I think he's in real estate at the moment. So, uh, so good luck to Stevie Spark as well. Uh, Carl says, I don't think Fundora was belting Mendoza that bad, to be honest. I, I rewatched the fight yesterday. Yeah, well, you're right. I don't think he was belting him. But I just thought he was winning winning the fight. And that's all you have to do. Having said that, as I said before, it doesn't matter if you've won nine out of ten rounds, all counts, and who's there when uh, when the, the ten count's been told. So, yeah, and that's why I think he's been sort of written off pretty easily, Carl, just because of that Mendoza loss. So... But look, I for one hope we get a great fight. By the way, I don't want to go all the way over there, and you know we have a two-round main event. But uh, look, I, I'm I'm thinking that it gives Tim a little bit of trouble for the first couple of rounds. Tim might try to get him out of there quick, but it being it's his first time on uh, American pay-per-view, uh, and obviously in Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena. But um, yeah, I just think it takes him three or four rounds to really find his range and settle down and adjust, and then we might see him go to work. Kyle says, I won't believe Zoo fights Crawford until the fight date is signed. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Well, I think we've all still got our fingers crossed at the moment, Kyle, probably including Tim and his team, to be honest, because nothing's... Well, they've got to get past this fight for starters, but, you know, Crawford is the number one or number two, well, in, in the top two anyway, pound for pound fighters on the planet. He, he can pretty much do what he wants. So, um, so on that point, you're right. Until the, it's, it's signed, we better not get too excited. But I just think... Excuse me, from all the, um, or from everything I've seen from Terence Crawford so far, he wants the Tim Zoo fight. I love it when Tim was asked a Canelo won 50 to $200 million question. I didn't see that, Carl. What did he say? I did see the actual comment from Canelo Alvarez. Well, Tommy, you don't want to fight David Benavides without telling me you don't want to fight David Benavides. But yeah. Um, Big J, like Fundora, Chock and Danny Green, were winning every round in their respective fights against Odki and the Polish bloke. Yeah, don't even try and pronounce his name, Big J. Means bugger all when you get KO'd. Yep, no, nah, yeah, you're right there, mate. 100% right. Chock was beating Odki, got knocked out, and uh, Danny Green was beating what's his name and got knocked out in the 11th round, I think it was, too. Jeez, that was a bad knockout, too, that one. That Polish guy could punch. Victor, is this the highest peak for Australian boxing? Seems like the best time that I can remember. Have the boxers just evolved in Aussie or has the boxing programs just improved? Bit of everything there, Victor. Look, I think more than ever, we've got really, really good promotional companies behind the fighters. Uh, we've obviously got No Limit behind Tim, Nikita, Liam and Sam Goodman. We've got Tasman Fighters uh, slash, or well, Matchroom Room with Matchroom with uh, Jai Pattaya and Justice Huni. And we've got, uh, and they've also got, uh, they got Connor Wallace as well, haven't they? I think is that, uh, is that them? Don't, uh, maybe not. Yes, it is. Tasman Fighters, yeah, of course. So that Connor Wallace, so he might. I know he's an Irishman. I will say, but he might get a shot at the title. Uh, and then uh, you've got Ace Boxing. They've now got Taylor Robinson. So yeah. So look, I think there's a lot of things in twine there, Victor. I think talent-wise, we've never been better. But I just think it's all that perfect storm of the talent. The eyes now coming on to Australia from the match rooms and top ranks and all these big promotional companies now looking at our talent. But not just that, it's homegrown promotional companies that have really grown. Fox Sports have got involved. Some of the streaming apps have now started to invest money into the promotional firms, which then it gets pumped into the fighters. And I just think the way it's viewed these days, all these streaming apps and networks and everything, they all need content. So they're all looking all over the world at the moment. And you look at Australia, the UK, Japan, I think now more than ever, people or the network's looking outside the States. And that's probably just, it's all just a perfect storm rolled into one, Victor. Because as I said, it's not just Australia at the moment. I don't think probably Japan boxing's ever been healthier. And even UK boxing probably hasn't been this healthy for a long time either. So just a great time to be a fan, no matter what country you're from. Luke, Zoo win by KO within four rounds. Okay, there we are. Uh, Turkey shut Canelo and Tank's dreams down. Quick, smart, didn't he? Yeah, we would have laughed at that uh, Canelo remark, wouldn't he? That's the, this is the excellency we're talking about. Uh, Cole says, Queensbury Promotions apparently headed to the zone. Okay, I didn't know that. So they've got the big uh, thing with Matchroom soon, haven't they? The five versus five. That'll be, that'll be good. 
Ella Vassan. How are you, Ella? Hi, it's me, Ella. I think Zoo win by KO. Well, thank you for your input. Yep. I think a lot of people in here agree with you, Ella. It should be a great fight, though. And the fact, look, my big thing is more than anything is that Tim Zhu and Michael Zarafa are on the biggest stage of all T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas. Um, so I'm not really stressed about the opponents, who they're fighting. I'm just amazed that these two guys are uh, on that big card. Liam Wilson the night before, Sky Nicholson the week after. It's just so much going on. And uh, I'm just wrapped for all the Aussies that are out there at the moment. Ladies, undisputed between Estrada versus Vale is a quality fight, in my opinion. I'm leaning to super bad Estrada. Now, I think I think I might have seen her fight. And yeah, I did. I did see her fight. When was it? That was last year. Yes. Now I know. Yes. Okay. She fought. Oh, I seen her at the Palms Casino in Las Vegas. She fought. Um, who was it there? Sorry, I'll get it up. There, Leonella Paula Utica. It was a really good fight, actually. So, yeah. Okay, now I'm with you. Yeah, she she's a, a little girl for sure. I'll keep moving there. All right. Tim versus Fundora isn't even on sports bet right now. That's uh, unusual, Carl. I don't, must admit I'm not really a better, so I don't look at the odds, but that's really strange. They wouldn't have uh, updated as quick as possible, but... Carl, I uh, did say there, nor, neither is Mendoza or Bolchuk. Okay. Uh, it's hard not to back Estrada, but I'm a sucker for Yoka. I hope she wins. I haven't seen Yoka fight, sorry, Carl, but Estrada goes very well. Big J says, I find it hilarious that Mendoza is fighting for a belt that he never lost. Yes, good call. As it was never on the line versus Zoo. Bloody WBC bowing to the Charlo brothers and all their garbage. That's a really good point, Big Joe. I hadn't thought of that. So if you didn't know, Brian Mendoza won the WBC interim 154-pound belt with that knockout over Fundora. Then he fought Tim Zhu, and the belt wasn't on the line. And then he was stripped of it anyway, and Fundora was supposed to fight Bolchek for it. So it's it's amazing. It's almost like, well, we'll just forget about that one. We'll sweep it under the carpet and hopefully hopefully no one notices. But you notice, Big J. So good stuff. All right. Uh, Andy, Danny Green was whipping Marcus Bayer before disqualification in first fight. But full props to Bayer for training correctly to beat Green in a rematch fair and square. Uh, props where props due. Yeah, well, it was only the fifth round now, I think, Andy. So it's not like it was the 10th or 11th round. But I get where you're coming from there. Victor. I've seen Canelo having a big weight advantage over Khan. He moved up for Kovalev and Bivol and also talked about um, Makabu at Cruiser. Oh, that's right, at Cruiserweight before Bivol lost. It seems with Benavides' fight, more obstacles appear. Yes, I suppose the only difference there is, though, Victor, is when he went up to light heavyweight to fight Kovalev. Kovalev was, I don't think, was in it um, mentally or I suppose physically he was okay because he made the weight and everything. It looked okay, but for me, never really looked like he was in the fight or wanted to really win that fight, which is a bold statement for Kovalev. He's been, it was a great champion before that. Makabu, even though it was a cruiserweight, let's face it, not necessarily the, um, you know, one of the top pound for pound fighters in the world. So I think it's just a matter of Benavides being you know, a, a bigger weight, but also a bigger guy and, and obviously can fight as well. So I think it just depends on who the heavier guy is by the sounds of things. Uh, and he says, WBC bends over backwards for the uh, for that dollars. Anyway, how sadly, in my opinion. Uh, Jamal should have been stripped already, in your, my opinion. How the heck they order super middleweight Mando for Canelo versus Benavides, but give Canelo pass in May. It's Canelo Alvarez, Andy. He's he's one of the, those, uh, the elite group that can pretty much do whatever the hell they want and won't get stripped. It's as simple as that. And it's not fair, but that's just boxing. Uh, Carl says it helps not having a fighter that's a prima donna as well. Yeah. Wallace versus Akuso. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I, I uh, would like to see that fight, Kyle. Who wins in that? Uh, both looked pretty good. I mean, Akuso, it was a great performance with a knockout. Um, I was disappointed it didn't go a little bit further, but that was all Akuso is doing. And his opponent, Dunzo, had some pretty good fights. He'd been stopped a few times, but never in the way that he had against Akuso. So, excuse me. 
And Wallace, I thought, showed a few vulnerabilities against Jack Gipp, but also showed his strengths and that he never gives up. He's got a heart uh, of a lion. He can punch and is always in the fight. So I did hear they, they sparred and uh, it was pretty interesting from what I heard. So, uh, But I'd love to see that, Cole. It would be a great fight. Uh, Luke says, I honestly believe Tim takes any 154-pound uh, serious contender without any thought and will ensure his team make the big fights happen. That's what he wants, Luke. He wants the biggest fights possible, and they don't get much bigger than uh, Terence Crawford, do they, if he gets past this? And who knows? If he beats Terence Crawford, does he start calling out Canelo? I know it's all pie-in-the-sky stuff, but look, you got to put yourself out there. you got to make yourself available for these fights and don't turn them down. Don't try and ask for more money, whatever it might be. Do what Tim's doing. Just take the biggest fights you can when you can and you never know what can happen, And which is proof because if he wins this, he might have Crawford after this. Uh, Victor says, here in America, Carl, I've seen on DraftKings betting app, Zoo was minus 550. I've got no idea what that means. Uh, Victor, I have seen... The odds are over there, but I don't bet, so I have no idea. I have Zoo winning, but I'm a sucker for underdogs, and Fandora to win by decision is plus 700 and plus 900 for stoppage. Okay, so that means, obviously, Tim is the out-and-out uh, -out favorite. So the value is getting on Fandora, especially by stoppage. All right, Paul, uh, how much better was that stand card than the No Limit? Um, dross, is that what it says? Uh, also, can Terramona Jr. win a gold at the Olympics? Well, first of all, the stand card was was good, Paul. I don't, look, I don't think you could probably get much worse than the No Limit card. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that because I've said on here many times, No Limit have all the resources that none of the other promotional companies have. And the cards so far this year have, have left a lot to be desired. But yeah, I thought the card was okay, uh, Paul. I'll get on to some of those results as well. Uh, yeah, and Terramona Jr. Well, heavyweights at the elite level, well, international level are pretty good, Paul. He has had a couple of pro fights too, and he can bang, so I think that that is in his favor. But at heavy or super heavyweight at the Olympics, mate, he's going to be coming up against some some very, very good fighters. Um, so, and I think, well, Justice Huni, even though he's a lot smaller, couldn't get gold at those massive events. And I think Justice Hoodie is a better fighter than uh, Terramona. But you've got to be in it to win it. And you get the right draw, then you just never know how far you can go, Paul. But he's in with a chance. So good luck to him if he, if he, if he, uh, if he does. 12 fighters, by the way, Australia are sending to the Olympics, which is this is uh, unheard of. Crazy. When I went, there was eight. And then the criteria changed. I think it was even down to like four, three, four, five, whatever it might have been. So... Yeah, to have, to have 12 boxes go to the Olympics is, is unbelievable. And then, obviously, best of luck to the whole team. Jules, we'd love to see Wallace versus Akuso, but can't see Wallace, Wallace risking all those top 10 rankings. Lots to lose, and he will lose. Yeah, Jules, I, look, my my uh, thoughts are of, uh, along the lines of when you get two guys like Akuso and Wallace, they don't fight each other, especially when there's nothing on the line. It just doesn't make sense, or business sense, or whatever your career sense, whatever you want might want to call it. They're both ranked. Actually, I'm not sure with how high Akuso is ranked with the with the uh, the sanctioning bodies, but Wallace has got some good rankings. Akuso is well on his way. What it just doesn't make sense to fight each other. One loses, and uh, gets once they get eliminated, but they get put right back to the starting grid and they've got to start again and build themselves up again. Why would you fight someone that's a real risk and both fighters are a risk to each other? Why would you do that when you're both on the way to world title shots? It just doesn't, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So while I would like to see that fight, I don't think that fight happens until maybe one of them has a belt um, or it just comes down to timing. And at the moment, the timing, while it might be right for us, us fight fans, it certainly isn't right for Connor Wallace and Paulo Acuso. But what a fight that would be. It's just a big explosive, wouldn't it? There'd be some bombs thrown. Make no mistake about that. All right, we have Kyle. Is Australia not going to be able to view the free fights from PBC? Um, I've got a feel. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, Kyle, but I would look at the Fox Sports schedule. Sometimes they put the undercard, might, although it is the weekend, football and everything on, who knows, but sometimes I'll put the undercard on early and it's free. PBC have got a streaming app, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to watch it on that. Um, and if, if we can't get it because of the whole 
um, you know, the VPN or whatever it is, or whatever they call it, the, the region or whatever the hell it is that stops you from, from streaming things, then get the VPN. I'm on Surfshark and it definitely works. So get the Surfshark app, uh, create an account, and I think it's like 25 bucks a year or something. It's not very expensive. Uh, download the PBC app, put it onto an American v VPN, and you should be able to watch it on the app. That's if it's not on Fox Sports here in Australia. I've got a feeling, actually, Cole, it might even be on YouTube. Check out the PBC YouTube page on the day, and they have been known to put the fights up as well. So either way, but worst case, check YouTube first and the, the guide for here in Australia. And uh, as I said, worst case, download the app and uh, get an American VPN. And he says, full props to uh, Ivyoka if she wins. Yep, if she's an underdog, but does have a chance for sure. I'm a fan of both. Uh, and he says, I would lean to a Kuso if Jules, uh, Jules, if that happened. That's the Conor Wallace fight. Luke says, I see Tim boxing him smart from the outside with feints to draw him in and will counter with overhand lefts and rights. Victor says, what do you think about Wilder coming back for Zhang? Yes, I did see that, Victor. Do you, do you see Wilder being retired after this? I think Zhang retires Wilder. Victor, I think... We all know how powerful Deontay Wilder is, but I don't know what the hell they're doing in training camp with him where he's trying to now turn into a boxer. Not sure why you would turn someone who just has devastating power in his right hand and tell him to get on the back foot and move away from these guys. Doesn't make sense to me. But in this case, I just think Zhang is so big and strong. I just don't see, well, anything's possible. I don't see Wilder knocking him out. And I think that's his only chance to win, Victor. I think Wilder's tank is uh, pretty shallow. Not that Zhang's massively deep either, but I just think Zhang walks him down and uh, possibly stops Deontay Wilder later in the fight. Will be explosive though. Now on that too, was it June the 1st on the, is that the Bitter, Better Bev and uh, Bivol card? I did see they've got, who else is on that? So you got Wilder and Zhang. There was, uh, is it Dubois? And who else was on there? Another one, uh, Her Hergovic. So that'll be a ripper card as well. So Saudi's just uh, calling the shots at the moment in the heavyweight division, aren't they? Carl says, I can't wait to see Valdez Wilson. It's a nice card. Yes, it will be, mate. Now, just on that too, guys, I'm heading off tomorrow. So when I get there, I've got plan. These best laid plans sometimes don't work out. But what I'm planning to do is maybe do a bit of a preview show before the event. I'm not quite sure when I'll do it, but definitely after the event so um it'll be still during the day here on saturday i'm going to go live from arizona glendale arizona and uh, we're gonna have a chat about uh that so it'll be pretty much a, a live review and so i'll be interested to hear your thoughts on it so make sure you log in or tune in straight after the valdez wilson card might be a, a, an hour or so after it depends on how quick i can get out of there um but yeah i will do a live review on that so if you want to have your thoughts on that make sure you tune in and That'll be the same with Tim and uh, uh, Sebastian Fundora. I'm looking to do a live review of that fight and preview from uh, the T-Mobile Arena outside. So we'll see how we go. Uh, Luke says, really keen for the Horn fight on Wednesday. Great matchups. That Ben Horn and Lewis Chadwick. Yeah, that'll be... <laughs> well, what, look, Ben, Ben, let's face it, is a limited fighter, but I love watching him fight. I love what he brings. He's awkward, but I like the way he, he just fights anyone. He gives every single person he fights a really, really hard fight. So, yeah, is he, is he um, his brother? No, he's not. But he's Ben Horn, and I, I really like the way he goes about it. So I'm looking forward to that one as well, Luke. I think Lewis Chadwick wins that fight, but not without Ben Horn giving it an almighty crack. So I'm spewing I'm going to miss it. I'll be uh, over there, but I was going to see if I can stream it on the um, on the uh, app here. So we'll see. Kyle says, do we know if Ajala Tome is going to fight on Wednesday with Beck Hawker injured, or has she been completely scrapped from the card? Yeah, well, it's an interesting one, Kyle. I don't think the card has been updated, has it? Let me, um, let me just have a look. I'll just check the card out. We might have a quick look. I'm not going to go through all the... The different cards because there's a lot on at the moment. Uh, I'll just I'll check on there. All right, so so he's obviously fighting Ben Horn. So that fight's still on there, Carl. Uh, Carl. It hasn't been updated. 
Uh, I would say she's probably off the card by the sounds of things. So, and Beck Hawker, yes, yeah, and bad luck, is it, for her? Hopefully she'll, uh, she'll come back uh, better. All right, Andy says, Zhang more fundamentally sound, likely beats Wilder, in my opinion. If Wilder continues this boxing off back foot, yes, that's what I said. But, of course, Wilder has that equaliser if he can detonate his big bomb and land correctly. I think one thing you've got to look at, too, though, Andy, is that similar to what I said about Isaac Hardman, um, and I'm a big fan of Isaac, by the way, but the right hand earlier in his career against lesser ranked, or lesser light type of opponents was just devastating. He won a lot of fights by knockout. And then when it, the the uh, quality of opponents started to improve, then the power just started to subside a little bit. And I see the same with Wilder. He had some horrific type of matchups on the way up and was made to look like a superstar. And then when he got up to the likes of Fury, I know he did drop Fury, by the way, um, but he's, he's, especially against Parker, just hasn't had the same impact. I know he had the knockout of, who was it, in between, the one that fought Joshua. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but um, and I just don't think his heart's in it at the moment, Andy. I, I, I don't know. I just I, I just see Zhang walking him down, throwing punches, and end up and, uh, ending up stopping Wilder as that fight goes on later in the fight. Yep, uh, I like Benny. He turns up the fight every time. Yeah, he does, mate. BJ, it's funny how irony works as Keithy did do himself a mischief. Yes, I wish we had got those shirts made, mate. I know you can buy them online, but yeah, you're right. He did do himself a mischief, didn't he? Torn the uh, the bicep muscle. Uh, Carl says, Zang got old overnight. He can't come in at 290 plus to beat Walter, in my opinion. He was slow and never let his hands go against Parker. Different type of opponent, though, Carl. I think that's the only thing that gives him more of a, a chance. Um, the only thing is, look, maybe... Maybe Walder's best chance is to box from a long distance because that's what Parker did and was able to outbox Zhang. I don't think he can do it for 12 rounds like Parker did, but it's not a bad point. I just think, look, I think, Carl, that Parker made Zhang look uh, over like old overnight. I think the right type of opponent for Zhang, like a lot of opponents, they look good, they look good against certain opponents and you put them with someone a little bit different, they look a little bit ordinary. I think Zhang... Don't, I'm not going to say he's got old overnight, even though he's, what, 30, is he 39, 40, whatever he is. But I just think Wilder is that type of opponent. He'll make Zhang look pretty good. So, But as I said, is it Wilder's best chance to actually get on his bike and run? We'll soon see. Let's hope they meet in center ring and they just go for it and whoever lands first. Uh, Bill, how you going there, mate? Welcome to the show. Hi, Lyndon. I'm back, being, back here in Tassie. Sorry, what's that? I'm back. In Tassie, Grant Brown's show was next level. Great, a great night, in my opinion. No one does it better than Grant. Well, he's great for Tassie boxing, isn't he, Bill? Uh, I did speak to Tassie a few days ago, and he said it was a massive success for him in Tassie. Uh, what, probably the best show he's put on, I think he said. So, and I think he's got another one planned later in the year. So, but it's, they don't be successful without people like yourself, excuse me, Bill, going there and supporting the events. And he always gets a really, really good crowd there, at least a thousand people. So, and he single-handedly kept Tasmanian boxing afloat for um, however long. So, uh, yeah, you're right, mate. He, uh, he does a great job, and uh, thank you for supporting uh, his events. Uh, Ed says, have to watch the replay. Uh, yep, goodbye to the whole chat. Just woke up from sleeping off the long day. All good, Ed. Watch the replay, mate. I don't know what time it is over there. Where are you? I'll go to the... Over there at the moment. On the East Coast, it is 5 a.m., in the morning and on the west coast it is 2 a.m in the morning so if you're watching from the states thank you very much all right we'll move on victor says if thurman could make weight the winner of adrian broner versus blair cobbs is a perfect circus for him yeah geez can you imagine thurman and broner Whew, yeah I, look i don't know where thurman goes victor i really don't i mean look he could look one fight he could two Look, you've, got, you've got to remember, too, he's not going to want to go back and work his way back up. He's done his time. He's a former world champion, so I don't think he really needs to go back and ply his trade. And I don't really, I don't know, maybe Adrian Broner's one. I don't think if Blair Cobbs beat Adrian Broner, that would interest Thurman, but maybe Boo Tennis would. I know a lot of people would say, shit, that's a really bad fight for Thurman, but who knows? Who knows? But that's, that's for me, after what's happened in this particular fight with Tim, 
that's the only fight for me that he could probably look at going for. Maybe it's Errol Spence, but Spence has made no secret that he doesn't want to fight Thurman because he Thurman didn't give him his opportunity back when he was champion. So I think it's all or nothing, all or nothing for Thurman. If I was him, I'd just say, look, let's just fight Boots Ennis, get a big payday and let me out of the sport. I think Boots Ennis would, would destroy Thurman, but at least he gets a payday and goes out on his shield. DJ1551. I'll call you DJ there, mate. Haven't seen or heard of Pete from Zarafa. No, well, he was on the live stream from the gym the other day, uh, DJ. I did see his interview there, but that's probably about it. And look, I suppose what you got to look at, it's a, it's a massive card. There's, well, pretty much five title fights on the card. A lot bigger name uh, names on that card than Zarafa. I suppose they can't sort of cover them all. I'm sure this week there'll be a press conference where you'll probably see and hear a, a lot more from him. They'll have all the main event fighters on the stage, you would think. Although with five world title fights or five title fights, maybe there mightn't be room for 10 people up there. But normally they have the full card. And uh, this is probably on the Thursday, I think it is. They do the press conference. Wednesday is normally the open workouts. Or sorry, I'll backtrack a bit. Thursday is normally the uh, grand arrivals at the MGM. Um, so yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday is the open workouts. Thursday is the press conference. And then Friday is the weigh-in. And of course, the fights are on Saturday. So I've got a feeling you might see Zarafa with those open workouts on the Wednesday and then at the press conference on Thursday, DJ. But look, end of the day, it's hard because he's in a world title fight, but unfortunately he's well down the card and you've got to know you play something sometimes. I'm not that... I don't think he'd be that stressed about not being at the forefront, DJ. I think it almost suits the Rafa a little bit, I think, just to go about his business in the background and keep his focus on the Lara fight and not get too caught up in the theatrics. You've got to remember, this is the most important fight of his life. So I don't blame him for just keeping a lower profile and letting Tim and uh, Rowley and all them guys have all the spotlight and just concentrate on the job at hand. He doesn't have to sell the fight, remember? Unlike a lot of his other fights back here, he doesn't have to sell it. He's on the undercard, so he can just do what he what he does. And uh, Victor says he would go for Zhang. Yes. DJ, Sean Porter went on to say Tim should avoid Crawford. Typical American attitude, more worried about protecting the zero. Yeah, Sean Porter, like, he's been out here a few times, hasn't he? And he's always looked to be a Tim Zhu fan, but he's he tipped... Um, uh, who was it? Uh, who was he? Uh, Thurman, sorry, a mental blank. He tipped Thurman to beat uh, Tim. He's now said Tim should stay away from Crawford. I've got a feeling he might have even said that Fundora might be able to give him some troubles as well. So, yeah, it's, maybe it's a little bit of bias, uh, DJ. But look, again, I know that there's a there's going to be a lot of people out there that say that Tim has no chance against, against Crawford. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? But I just want to see him in the fight. And you got to dare to be brave. I think sometimes as fans, we tend to have that Floyd Mayweather mentality. Oh, geez, he can't possibly fight Crawford because he, he, he's not going to beat Crawford. Well, who cares? Who cares if he doesn't fight, or sorry, if he fights Crawford and doesn't beat him? Who cares? His, his whole sort of legacy wouldn't change in my eyes, and I'm sure a lot of fans out there eyes, because again, you got to dare to be great. And no shame losing to Crawford, so go for it. And I did see an interview the other day with Dana White. Great point. The problem with boxing is we have this, we have that Floyd Mayweather mentality that he had. It's all about the zero. And if you lose the fight, your career's over. UFC fighters don't get judged by their records. They get judged by the fights they're in, the titles they won, the great fights uh, they won, lost, whatever it might be, and the legacy they left. That's how they get judged. We were just so hung up as boxing fans about records. And that's why I've always said I don't rate records at all. Anyone can manipulate a record. I'm I'm just one of those people that like to look at people for the, the legacy they've left and are building. So um, on that there, yeah, I, I don't care what Sean Porter says. I think Tim Zhu should fight Crawford and win, lose, whatever, then so be it. You know, it is what it is. Dare to be great. But you are right there, DJ. Uh, America, I won't just say it's Americans. There's a lot of people out there We've got to get away from that Floyd Mayweather mentality. We have to get away from the whole at zero or nothing. Some of the best, well, actually probably about 99% of the greatest fighters of all time all had under, um, didn't have undefeated records. So, And the real greats like Sugar A. Robinson and Roberto Duran and these had multiple, multiple losses. 
and regarded as and Pacquiao just regarded as the best of all time. Uh, what do we got there? Uh, that's Andy. Uh, if and when Tim gets past Fondora, I'd be hoping and cheering for our Aussie guy Tim. But make no mistake, I'd be expecting Bud to get the win. Yeah, look, you got to go by what you see, Andy. And I think so far you got to go with the facts from what we've seen. And Crawford would be the undeniable favourite. No issue at all. And I'm not saying Tim beats him or anything like that. I'm just saying. If you get past Fondora, aim for the biggest fight possible. What do you think made the likes of Manny Pacquiao great? You know, they, they took every single fight they could. They won some, they lost some, and Manny Pacquiao's regarded probably ahead of Floyd Mayweather in history and lost eight times, and Mayweather didn't lose once. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, I agree there, mate. I'm not going to say Tim beats Bud, but I want to see him have a crack at Bud. Why not? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ed. Really appreciate that, mate. He says he appreciates uh, the channel. Good to hear real boxing talk. Well, we try and keep it real, mate. Andy says, Thurman versus Spence now. Still better late than never, in my opinion. Yeah, well, as I said, mate, I, I like that fight. It's a good fight. Both of them been out for a long time, uh, coming off all sorts of injuries and out-of-ring dramas. So, hey, what better fight than that one? I'd, I'd pay to see it. I think it'd be a great fight. Good question from Victor, says Jules. Do you think the resurgence in Aussie boxing is in the top end of talent or across the board? I.e., is the average fighter today better than the average 20 to 30 years ago? No, I don't think so, Jules. I just think, as I said, there's a lot more opportunities for our guys now. Uh, I just remember, look, even back 20 or 30 years ago, remember the, the golden crop of, of Olympians and all that that turned pro? There was uh, Bomber Peden and uh, Justin Rousel. Jamie Nicholson turned pro there for a bit. Uh, some really uh, Spike Sheeny. Now imagine if those fighters these days had the match rooms and top ranks and even the uh, the No Limits and Ducos and Tasmans and all these types of promotional companies behind it. We just never had that. It was sort of Bill Morty was the only avenue to sort of go down back then, and Bill Morty did a great job, uh, and he competed with the heavyweights of world. Uh, boxing is on a promotional level back then. He had obviously Jeff Fennick, Jeff Harding, Costa Zoo, amongst others, um, and did a great job with that. But just think these days with the TV money we have and the streaming rights and uh, you know the world just being so much smaller because of technology and the backing and everything else, uh, I just think we did have the talent, but uh, they just didn't have anywhere near the opportunities that they have these days. So and th and to think that. Jeff Fennick went over uh, to the States. Harding went to the States um, and did, and obviously Costa did what they did, especially with Jeff, uh, Jeff Harding with no no fanfare whatsoever, no backing, no anything. I know we had Bill Morty, but he was only, I think he only had 13 or 14 fights at the time and went over there and did what he did. So imagine if those types of fighters had the backing that the fighters of today have. So I'm going to go against that there, Jules. I'm going to say we had just as much talent back then but we just see and hear a lot more about them these days. And of course, as I said, they have a lot more opportunities. DJ says, uh, Thurman's, uh, this is Thurman and Spence. Thurman's busted body versus Spence's busted eyesight. Yeah. And Carl disagrees. He says it won't happen. Errol needs a tune-up. Is that a tune-up, Keith Thurman? Or is Spence a tune-up for Keith uh, or either either way, Spence for Thurman, Thurman for Spence. No, I think you're right, Carl. I think maybe uh, they should both have a tune-up before fighting each other. Maybe they could sit down and say, okay, well, we're going to fight in 12 months' time or eight months' time. We're both going to have a tune-up in the next sort of three or four months, and then we'll fight end of the year. Because I, I just think it's the biggest fight for each other at this stage. So why not do it? Good money. I think it's still got some appeal. Not a lot, but some. So why not get the most of it, out of it as you can? And the winner... Who knows, might get a crack at uh, Tim Crawford, whoever it might be. All right, Jules, a follow-up question. Where would Jeff Fennick, Costa Zoo, and Anthony Mundine rank in your current top 10 Aussie pound for pound if they were fighting today? Ooh, okay. Um, all right, so let's have a look at it. We've got Jeff Costa, for starters, up against Jai and Tim. I still think Jeff Fennick, Costa Zoo are one and two, I think. I, look... Costa got the runs on the board. Jeff Fennick has got the runs on the board. Uh, Costa's who uh, undisputed 140-pound champion. Jeff Fennick, three, should have been four-time world champion. Let's break it down. Tim, as great as he, he's, he's sort of looking to be, still only won that one version of the title. Hasn't had that 
um, legacy fight just yet. Um, and Jai Bataya, hey, look, he's a killer, but hasn't had that big fight either. Breedus was the biggest in the division at the time, but that, to me, is not that mega fight. A big fight, of course, the biggest fight that could be had in that division, but he's going to be judged later down the track, I think, if he goes to heavyweight. So for me, it's definitely Jeff Bennett and Costa Zoo 1 and 2 uh, out of those sort of five or those four fighters. Anthony Mundine, I think you would still put him ahead of the likes of, uh, well, it's a line ball thing because George Cambosis and Jason Maloney have won, you know, those real legitimate world titles in tough, hard fights. Anthony Mundine sort of won. He, I know he ended up winning a version of the real strap, but Antoine Eccles, I don't think he rates alongside the opponents at George Cambosis. Oh, well, I could definitely say for George Cambosis because he beat Tiafema Lopez and Jason even with, with what he's done. So I would think out of, if you've got those, if you rank those three against the top four today, so Jeff, Costa and Anthony from the past and Tim, Jai, George and Jason, I would have, um, who do you have one and two from Jeff and Costa? I'm going to put Costa Zoo at number one, Jeff Fennick at number two, Jai Pattaya at number three, Tim Zoo at number four, George Cambosis at five, Jason Maloney at six, Anthony Mundine at number seven. And I suppose you could have Danny Green in there at number eight if you really wanted to. All right, Andy says, let's not forget Thurman and Spence only have one L each, so should still be a solid fight. Yep, good, Andy. I think Again, I think we just forget how good these guys are. They have one loss, and all of a sudden, we write them off. So I like that. That's a really good point. Carl says, uh, what's that there? Oh, I lost it there. Derek James and Errol Spence have parted ways. I didn't know that, Carl. Thanks for um, letting us know that. Yeah, that's that's strange. Although Derek James is obviously busy with Robert, uh, with uh, Ryan Garcia, isn't he? Just popped into my head how entertaining Vic Darchenian was. He was a beast, Mutsy. He was an animal, was uh, uh, Vic Darchenian. And I think I've said on here a couple of times before in the past, I went to a live fight with him in LA at the StubHub Center. And um, he knocked out a Mexican badly who had to be uh, resu not resuscitated, but had some air in the in the ring and had to be put on a stretcher. And the Mexican started throwing bottles at Vic and his team while he was getting interviewed. And him and about five uh, Arminian mates jumped into the crowd and took on all the Mexicans. So he's, <laughs> his supporters were even crazier than what he was. But no, nah, he, he was a, an absolute beast, Mutsy. He certainly was. Yes, the raging bull was Vic Darchenian. All right. Oh, Ross. Okay, there you go. Ross, $1.22. Draw, 17 Fundora, $4.80. Okay, we've... Obviously, if you're not looking to um, win a lot, but an easy payday, maybe you go for Zoo at 122. That draw's not bad, is it? But Fundora, $4.80, not bad odds at all. Ronnie says, G'day, Victor. I think Australia has always had plenty of talent. Mate, the world is a much smaller place now with travel and better promotion. Yep, said it brilliantly there, Ronnie. Uh, Andy's, uh, Victor says to Andy, good fight, but that's a promoter's nightmare. Praying for those two to make it to fight night. That's Spence and Thurman. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be the promoter there, Victor, because you'd be like, you'd just be like this the whole way with your fingers crossed. Uh, Ross, some more odds there. Boachuk, one fifty four, Mendoza, $2.70, and the draw, $17. I don't mind those odds on Mendoza, I've got to say. Or the draw. Luke says, does Michael even deserve a mention with so many Aussies doing great things at the moment? Jai and Liam, Liam don't even get the mention recognition they deserve, let alone talk about who has done nothing for ages. Well, I think he deserves some, some recognition, Luke. He's fighting for a world title. Um, you know, is, is he as big as name as the others? Nowhere, nowhere near it, of course. Although in Australia, he is a massive name, probably for the wrong reasons. You put Tim Zhu and Michael Zarafa in a fight here in Australia, that's probably breaking the record set by Danny Green and Anthony Mundine. I mean, that's just the way it is. So I think he does deserve a mention. Um, but as far as achievement goes and standing, nowhere near does he rank near a Jai or Liam or obviously a George or a Jason. Um, but uh, as I said, maybe he just he just knows where he stands and is grateful that he's got the world title shot and he's happy to be, you know, in the background, just preparing solidly and, and gearing himself up for a big fight. But... Yeah, I definitely don't think he deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as, say, obviously a Jai or a, or a Tim or a Jason or a George. But um, he's fighting for a world title and um, doesn't get much bigger than that. 
Kyle says, apparently PBC are trying to set up Plant versus Jamal Charlo. Is a Rafa beats Alara, I imagine he'll be praying Jamal takes that fight so he and Adamas can fight for unifications. Yeah, I've got a feeling if Michael wins the belt and Tim wins, I've got a feeling t uh, Michael's first thing might be to say, hey, let's get this fight on. Come up to middleweight and fight me from a belt. That might be his first priority. I don't think that happens. I think Tim says, mate, keep your belt. I'm not interested. I've got bigger things to um, to do, a la Crawford. But if that's not the case, um, yeah, I, I don't mind the fight with uh, Adamus, to be honest, Kyle. I think it, Michael should stay away from uh, Yannabek. That's a bad fight for Michael. I think he gets knocked out in that fight. Yannabek is a bad, bad man. But, um, yeah, well, I think let's in this instance, I think Michael at this stage will be just saying, hey, look, let's just get past Lara and win that WBA belt, and then we can assess after that. But there's not... There's not a lot around in that division at the moment. And as I said, I'd stay away from Yannabek. Maybe Jamal... No, sorry, Jamal's gone up to 168, hasn't he? So that's not going to happen. And Jamal, we don't know what's happening with him either. So there's not a lot around. So the uh, opportunity's there for Michael Cole if he beats Lara to get some okay fights, some winnable fights anyway, except for the Yannabek fight in my opinion. But yeah, but as I said, I think he'll worry about that uh, until after he gets the belt. Oh, there we go. Ross says Lara dollar thirty one. It's a Rafa three dollars eighty. So not giving Michael Zarafa a lot of uh, hope are uh, the the odds makers. So that's that's not a bad uh, um, set of odds if you ask me. Ross Zarafa three dollars eighty. Axi man, how are you, mate? Now that Carlos Quadros is out with injury i wonder who andrew maloney fights is, is that right uh Axie man Where, how come i haven't seen that he's out okay there's news for me mate i haven't se seen that on any of the sites and to be honest with you if i hadn't have been going away tomorrow i would have tried to get the boys on tonight but i just haven't been able to organize stuff and been busy i wanted to maybe try and get them on before i left so that would have been an interesting conversation wouldn't it He's still on there with fighting Quadros, mate. But fill us in, Axie Man. What do you know? Because that's the first I've heard of it. Ronnie says, hey, Victor, while the boxing trainers these days have good programs, the likes of Ambrose Palmer, Jack Rennie, Irma Quillen, etc., certainly knew the fight game inside and out. And Victor, if you didn't know, mate, they are legendary Australian trainers. And you could probably put Johnny Lewis in there too, Ronnie. I know it's a little bit... Um, after those guys up there back in back in your day but uh yeah look yeah I, I just think on another subject i think the trainers back then in my opinion might have been a little bit better in some ways because they were teachers they were coaches these days i mean there's two separate sorts of ones a lot of them are just like the whole pad thing and the routines and all the rest of the bullshit they go on with but it's the teachers and the coaches that are the best ones. That's why the, the likes of Freddie Roach and Robert Garcia and Derek James, I suppose you put in there as well, are all the best coaches because they are teachers. Um, where others are just interested in flush, uh, flushy routines on the pad. So, but good point there, Ronnie. Uh, what's that? Is Harry Garside in the team to the Olympics? Yeah, he is, mate. Uh, disappointed he left pro boxing. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't come back, Carl. I don't look. Doesn't suit everyone. Doesn't suit everyone. You got to remember, amateur boxing is a sport. I won't say it's fun, but it's a sport. You get to travel the world. You get to represent your country. Um, you know, you can fight multiple times. If you lose, you're not you're not fighting these these um, you know ten and twelve round fights where they're just you know they take a lot out of you mentally, physically, health wise, whatever it might be. It's a sport, especially with the way Harry fights is that arm distance fencing type of style. So he's not really going to get knocked around too much. So he could probably fight till he's 40 if he wanted to in the amateurs. But pro boxing is a lot different. So, yeah, i got no drama. I'm disappointed like you, Carl, but I'm not surprised and I don't blame him, to be honest. Because, uh, you know, as I said, you get to fly all over the world, flying, in the, you know, um, representing your country and going in these tournaments. And, you know, it's a great lifestyle. It really is. Probably getting... Uh, you know, looked or looked after by sponsors, the government, of course, with the AIS. So yeah, I, I look, you know, it's 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 such a lifestyle thing, I suppose. And yes, uh, if you want to see the the app to look at for the betting, it is Sportsbet. 
All right. Uh, Carl says same way. The saying Fundora will learn how to keep uh, learn how to keep Tim at. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, at the distance. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Bill says, uh, "Will we all will be cheering, hoping Tim pulls it off, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie?" Yeah, well, that's that's exactly right, Bill. And obviously, Michael on the undercard, Liam the night before, and then Sky Nicholson the week after. Just a massive week of boxing. Ronnie says, "On the world stage and the pro ranks, Harry Guy's side not up to that level, in my opinion." Yeah, well, there has been some question marks about his his power, Ronnie, which is probably another reason why the amateurs probably suit him. But I suppose we'll never know. Well, I hope we do get to know. I thought he actually looked okay in his fights. I, I was a little bit worried about the power aspect. But, um, yeah, let, let's hope we find out. But I wouldn't be surprised if he never goes pro. He just stays as amateur and goes to three or four Olympic Games. Pro box is not for everyone. Uh, we'll go through. So, yeah. Andy, oi, 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 yep. Uh, what's up, Ronnie? Safe travels tomorrow, my friend. Enjoy your trip and make sure we see your daily round up. Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm heading off tomorrow night at about 11 o'clock my, my uh, flight leaves Melbourne. So I'm heading to LA first. Uh, I think I get there at about half past seven or quarter past seven at night over there. And then the next morning, I'm flying to Phoenix, Arizona. And then I'll be driving to Glenda, which I think is about a 25, 30 minute drive from phoenix so i'm there for three days and then on fight day i'm heading up to vegas so so yeah it's all happening let's just hope the planes are on track or else i'll be hiring a car quickly and driving up to vegas but thanks ronnie i'll speak to you when we when i get home mate uh and he says make no mistake pbc with pbc interest at heart would prefer the house fighter in this case fundora win over the visitor tim zoo tim has to make it absolutely undeniable to play it safe in my opinion yeah, it's yeah. You've got a point there, Andy. I've got a feeling that um, PBC would want. I, I think they would see a Tim versus Crawford fight being a better fight than Fundora versus Crawford. Just I think they would really like the Australian element involved, pay per views, all that sort of stuff. Obviously, people going over for the fights. So it, on paper, you're right, but I've just got a feeling that PBC behind closed doors would be hoping that Tim maybe wins this fight to set up the Crawford fight because I think they would see that fight as very, very attractive um, for the Australian element involved to get us involved, not just the American portion. So we'll see. But uh, look, make no bones about it. If I was him as well, I'd be not leaving it to the judges' scorecards. I'm with you there. Kyle says, watched Jeff Horn versus Crawford two nights ago. It looked much better than Spence, despite the fact that Jeff was a brawler. Well, I was actually at that fight, Kyle, live at the MGM Grand, and I thought for the first two or three rounds, Jeff actually did okay. Crawford, look, I think we all knew that in the end, Crawford's class was going to be too much for Jeff, but I thought Jeff actually fought okay. Yeah, so he was stopped in the ninth round, whatever it was, and class told at the end, but I actually thought Jeff did okay. A lot better than what Spence did, you're right. So... Um, and Jeff was a brawler. I would have thought, and I was surprised too that on that on the night with Spence versus Crawford, that Crawford become the banger and really looked to get Spence out of there quick. Um, and Spence, who was supposedly the the better, like well, you know, an elite pound for pound boxer as such, did not have the ability to get out of the way of those shots and last. Well, I know he he got stopped, but um, I thought I'm with you, Kyle. I thought Jeff uh, did actually a better job, even though they are different styles, of course. Uh, Carl, safe travels. Look forward to the updates. Yeah, I'll be doing plenty there, Carl. As I said, I'll be, I'm not sure I'll do a, a, a vlog every single day because there's a couple of traveling days, um, you know, a lot of in between nothing days. So what I might do is uh, at least a couple of different videos, one in the lead up to the Liam Wilson, Oscar Valdez fight, and then one in the lead up to the Tim Zhu, Zarafa, not, um, sorry, not Zarafa, Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora fight as well. So I might just do two or three sort of videos. But as I said, I'll do a preview and I'll do a review, a live one, as well as just lots of stuff on Instagram. So make sure you follow us on Instagram there, guys. Uh, I've been a little worried about the whole PBC thing, PBC thing as well, says DJ. The saving grace is Tim is only contracted to one more fight with PBC after Fundora. Well, that might change, DJ, because if they offer... Uh, Tim the fight with Crawford uh, there might be a clause in that that if he beats Craw uh, Crawford 
but they might have the claw stuck in them, stuck into him for two or three more fights, I would think. And, and it makes sense. If you're going to invest in a big fight like that and make it happen, then you know you want to be protected if um, you know the B side happens to get up, and that's what will happen in this case. I would have thought. Uh, Andy says, Spence rematch clause stalled Bud's momentum there for a bit until he fell through, but Bud stays in shape. Uh, versus Tim Fondora winner, very probable now, Eubank fake news. Well, I don't think that was ever going to happen, Andy, because, um, of course, Bomac can't go back to England, so they can't have the fight there. And Eubank Crawford in the States probably doesn't sell that well. But you are right about the momentum, because Bud obviously had to wait for, uh, for Spence to uh, enact the rematch clause, and he did, however... Uh, he had the eye operation, whatever it was, and the uh, the time passed, and now Bud can pretty much do what he wants. And I don't think anyone really wanted to see Bud Spence too, did they? I, I didn't. So I think, it, look, sometimes it all works out for a reason. And as I said earlier in the show, Tim gets past Fondora, wants to fight four months later, then who's there around that time? It's Terence Bud Crawford. Yeah, uh, there's Crawford. How are you going there, mate? Justin Crawford. If you didn't know, Justin Crawford, He's one of the best amateur fighters Australia has produced. Went to two Olympics. I uh, was at two Commonwealth Games. My uh, teammate on the uh, Atlanta Olympic teams amongst a few other um, tournaments we went to. And as I said, uh, probably in my opinion, the best fighter to come out of Tasmania, along with Daniel Gill. But uh, definitely one of the best Australian amateur boxers we have seen. So thanks for tuning in, mate. I hope you're going well. And, yeah, and Bomber is definitely uh, one of the best too, mate, back in the day. Uh, DJ says, Tim might actually be a high money maker for PBC in the short term over Fundora. We know they're desperate for money at the moment. Yeah, well, things haven't exactly gone to plan for him, have they, DJ, so far? Andy says, PBC would be juggling short term versus long term gain, no doubt. Yep, they'd have to have some sort of business plan, you'd hope, Andy. Uh, a cheer for any Aussie having a title shot. Zarafa included, says Andy. Hope he beats Lara and does get Adamas next, to be honest. Yep. Yeah, look, as Aussies, Andy, of course, we're all going for Michael Zarafa. Um, you know, it's we've spoken about it numerous times. It's a golden age for, for Aussie boxing. And who knows, we could have... So we could have Tim, Jai, uh, Zarafa, Cambosis, if he beats Lomachenko, Sky Nicholson, so we could have five, six world champions. It's just crazy, crazy times. And Jason, of course, so crazy, crazy times. Uh, what do you got there, Bill? This show told me I've got a big payday coming up. Of, I'm putting $100 on Zarafa. Yeah, put it on, mate. If he wins, good good odds. Zarafa at 380 until Liam Wilson at $4 wouldn't be the craziest move anyone could make. Very good, very good point there, Jules. Uh, Carlos Quadros has a torn Achilles and has already had surgery. Okay, that's well. There's been uh, nothing said as far as I know. Actually, man, that is uh, a really good uh, tip there, mate. Apparently, Pedro uh, Guevara is tipped to fight Andrew now. Okay, well, still another great fight. I didn't know about that, actually, man. I haven't seen anything said about it. So, let me know your sources, mate, because that is uh, something I didn't know. DJ, I'm not a fan of Rolly. He's a proper dill. If Pitbull beats him beats him up, can you record some close-up vision for your subscribers? I'll do my best, mate. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed, is he, uh, Rolly Romero? He uh, he can fight. I, look, I think Isaac or Isaac Cruz um, beats Rolly Romero, if you ask me. I think Rolly Romero, very like limited type of fighter. He's done, obviously, well to win the WBA strap, if you can call it a win over... Uh, what looked like his grandfather. But um, yeah, no, I, I think Cruz wins that fight. And I'd be wrapped if Cruz does win. I did see the documentary. Um, and I'm not sure, is that still out, the documentary? Have they canned it now that Furman's out? I'm not quite sure. But I did see the documentary that they put out uh, behind the gloves, I think it was called, that he's done it pretty hard uh, coming up. So it'd be great if he could uh, win that belt and uh, get some uh, big paydays under his belt too. Alan Bolton, how you going, Alan? What time is the main fight on? Okay, well, it will be, let's say it's 9 o'clock. It's probably about, so it'll be 9 o'clock. I'm just trying to think. I'm just going to go back. So over there, it's, let's just say it's coming up at 3 o'clock in the morning over there. So it would be 30 hours from now, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, what's that? So I'm just trying to work it out here. So 
It's now, what is it over there at the moment? So it's Sunday over there. So it's three. All right. So I'm minus 18 hours behind anyway, mate. So go forward six hours. Uh, I reckon about one o'clock. How's that? We'll say one o'clock, one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Jeez, now you got me, mate. I'm trying to do the, um, the uh, go backwards with, <laughs> with the, the time. It's normally about nine o'clock at night over there anyway, mate. So yeah, I'm assuming it's about probably two or three. Might even be three o'clock depending on daylight, daylight savings, I think. Three o'clock in the afternoon, it might be on. So um, anyway, it'll be sometime in the afternoon on Sunday, March the 31st on Easter Sunday, Alan. I think the main car or the, the card itself might start at 11, I think. Let's have a look. Hang on. I've got it up. Let's see if I can bring it up on um, on the My Foxtel app. Let's have a look. All right. Let's shop. Yes, please. Main event. All right. So the card starts at 11 a.m. So it might even be on a bit earlier than that, guys. It might be on at about 2 o'clock, I would say on Sunday or Easter Sunday, March 31st. And if you're looking to get it on, it is $69.95 on main event and KO. Not sure what it is in the States, but $69.95 Australian dollars, which is about 40 bucks American, I think. So, all right. Uh, what's that? Ross, how you going there, mate? Jump in with Glenn on the private jet from Liam's flight to Tim's. I don't think I'll be welcome on that uh, jet, Ross. I've had a, just a couple of things to say about the no limit shows lately so i don't think they uh would give me i have just put it out there geez wouldn't it be great glenn nudge nudge wink wink if there was a spare seat on the plane to fly from phoenix up to uh, uh up to las vegas but uh it's all, it's all good i'll get there either way if the flight is looking like it's going to be delayed i'll be jumping on or jumping in a car and driving i think it's about nearly a four hour drive so i'll be hooning up there i'll leave about lunchtime i'll be up there about four o'clock so i think my plane actually goes about up past 10 so i think i'm going to know well before that the state of I say to play with my car. So worst case, I'll be hiring a car and driving up to Vegas. And no, Jules, I'm not on the private jet. I'd like to be, but as I said, I got a feeling uh, that um, I won't be welcome on that flight. And look, I will say, by the way, no, they're not going to give a shit what I say or think or whatever. Not like, like with all the other uh, opinion, people out there with an opinion. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be expecting any favours or Christmas cards this year, guys. Uh, Ross, they would have a spare seat for him, wouldn't they, Ronnie? No, I doubt it, uh, Ross. But I'll ask a question if I'm there. What's that there? I think I sent you the link. Oh, okay. There you go. Sorry, Ross. Did you send me a message? Where are you? Let's have a look. Oh, okay. There we go. Let me have a look here. See if I can bring it up on the screen here, guys. Apologies for that. I didn't see your message. Where is it? Let's have a look. All right. All right, let's see if I can open it up here. Apologies to everyone that's actually listening to this after the fact. Real riveting stuff. We'll bring it up. While it just comes up there, I'll keep answering some questions. Andy says, yeah, I'm leaning to Pitbull over uh, Riley. Still think Tank may rematch winner for that 140-pound uh, WBA belt if Barroso, Barroso doesn't get another shot. I, I wouldn't like to see that, Andy. I think he's been there and done that, but he has got the fight with uh, Frank Martin coming up, of course, but uh, all right, actually, now we've got, all right, there it is there. I'm going to bring you guys in. Let's have a look. I'll get rid of that. So there it is there. Hang on. I'll get rid of that comment if I can. All right. Carlos Quadros out. Andrew Maloney seeks new opponent for May 12 in Australia. Okay, anybody on the hunt for a new uh, foe? The ring has confirmed that Mexico City's Carlos Quadros was forced to withdraw from a previously scheduled bout versus Maloney. Quadros suffered a torn Achilles for which he already underwent surgery. Okay, the recovery process will extend well beyond the plan. May 12, interim WBC 115-pound title fight in Perth, Australia. Okay, so the ring has learned that Pedro Guevara has emerged as the leading candidate to replace his countryman. Okay, well, there you go. All right, well, let's keep an eye on that. When was that? Has it got the date there that it was written? Uh, it doesn't look like it. All right, okay, well, there you go. So we'll look out with interest who gets the shot at Andrew Maloney, but it looks like it will be Guevara. 
Uh, all right, guys, any more comments? So while we're waiting for actually a couple more to come through, um, I did get a few comments and and uh, that from, about the K. Scott and Desley Robinson fight. I did put a quick little grab on Instagram that I thought Desley Robinson was very, very unlucky to not get that fight. Um, I really felt for her. I thought she won five, if not six of the, the eight rounds. I thought she had an answer to everything that K. Scott did. And I don't understand how the judges saw that fight the way they did. Um, but, and look, the thing as I say to some of the people that wanted to comment and, you know, DM and all that sort of stuff, oh, 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 right there, is that it's nothing personal against K. Scott. It's just an opinion. I'm allowed to have an opinion like everyone out there. Um, as I said, I didn't think she won the fight. It's got nothing to do personally against her. It's, it never has. It's just the fact that looking at it objectively, K. Scott did not win that fight. Simple as that. So again, I don't know what fight the judges were, were watching. I understand they're all on different sides of the ring. They all have different perspectives. But watching it, I just had no doubt that Desley Robinson was the winner. I thought that maybe K. Scott might have got on top maybe as the fight went on. Even though she's only had the one fight, she's had a lot of amateur fights, a lot of sparring and experience all over the world. But I just thought as the fight went on, I thought Desley Robinson got better. And I just thought she was um, she was the superior fighter on the night. Apparently, uh, D.D. Hobbs got robbed as well. I didn't see that fight. But look, I'm not, I think I said as well, I'm, I'm not going to say there's just blatant robberies out there all the time. But I just think sometimes the judges they have, I mean... And, I, and actually, what I will say as well is that sometimes we'll call it the A side, even though this fight was in Desley's hometown and she, I suppose you could say she was the, the home fight and everything else. The fact of the matter is Kay Scott was a very, very decorated amateur boxer, um, two-time Commonwealth Games rep. I'm not sure whether she went to the Olympics. World title uh, silver medalist as well. So she was, in my eyes, the A side as far as her standing goes. And I just think sometimes the judges tend to, and I know we've all been sort of guilty of it, you tend to watch that one fighter. And I know we do it ourselves, watch our favorite fighter, and we just tend to watch them, which is why we sometimes don't see the bigger picture and think our favorite fighters won when in fact they haven't. I wasn't really watching really either fighter, I was watching the fight. And I just thought that Desley Robinson um, just landed the better punches every single round. And I think even the rounds that Case got won were close. So there's that's my sort of two cents worth. Um, but I haven't seen a fight for a while where I've looked at it and went, oh, geez, that's really harsh. Sometimes I go, oh, it's close, could go either way. Um, you, can, you can make a, a you know a case for either one, but on Saturday night, I just thought that Desley Robinson was a clear, clear winner. And I will say again to all the K Scott fans out there, it's nothing personal, nothing to do with K at all. Could have been whoever in the ring. I'm looking at the fight itself, and Desley Robinson won that fight. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, so 19th of March was that Andrew Maloney story. So what, what's that? N nearly a week ago. And we still haven't heard about it. I wonder why it hasn't been picked up by um, all the sites here in Australia. That's very interesting. And Ronnie, not, I know nothing about him, uh, Ronnie, about um, Andrew's new opponent, if that is the case. So I can't say I do, mate. I've checked his record out, but now you've said that I'm going to have to have a look at him. I do know he is 41, 4, and 1 with 22 knockouts. Let me type in his box rec. We'll have a look. Pedro Guerrera. Oh, no, that's with a G. Sorry, Lyndon. Sorry. All right. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. Let's have a quick look, guys, while we're going there. So a few minutes to go. We might as well have a, have a look. All right. So there is our Pedro Guerrera. So he's coming off a 10-round win over Lumberto Macias. There you go. He actually lost. Oh, okay. That's what it was. So he actually lost to Quadros last year for that WBC interim belt. So he's had the four losses. Let's go see. He hasn't lost for a while. So so that was for the WBC light flyweight title against Kenshiro Tarashi. Okay. Um, all right, so, all right, so, credible opponent. If that is the case there, guys, and he does actually fight him, no issues with that at all. That's a tough, tough fight as well. So I think that will be a great one for um, for Andy to get that one. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it a night. Um, it's about 10 minutes early, but not much sort of coming through. But, look, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in again. 
As I said, this will be the last show for probably two, if not three weeks, but I'll keep as much content coming. Make sure you jump on our Instagram page. I'll keep as much coming on that as we can. The YouTube page, obviously, I'll have some videos going up and keep a lookout for the live um, shows that I'm going to do. Uh, definitely be live reviews after the fight, but probably we might do a preview as well. But either way, uh, just as long as the times marry up, because I'm thinking over there, if it's about 7 o'clock, say, at night here, uh, in Vegas, it would be uh, it nine? it'll be about six in the morning over there. So I've got to get got to get my timing right. All right, all right, guys. Well, that's it for me. Look forward to seeing you when I get back. Uh, hope you have a great week of uh, well fight week, and it's also looking at the the fights this weekend. So much going on. Let's hope the Aussie boys and girls get up, and uh, look forward to catching up when I return. Thanks, guys.